Hello everyone and welcome to the new Fly Drop World. Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot and many of those stores sell Venus flytraps just like these ones for five or six dollars. These Venus flytraps are very inexpensive but they often end up dying because they are kept in very poor growing conditions. So in today's video I'd like to share with you how to rescue these plants to keep them alive and thriving. The first step to save these plants is to take them out of the enclosure where they came in. These enclosures are really not very useful. They keep some humidity inside of the container, but besides that, they do not provide much of a benefit. So just get your plant out of the container, just like this one, and get rid of this enclosure and really never use it again because it is not useful. After you have taken your plant from the enclosure, then the next step to save it is to repot it. If you do not have all the ingredients to repot your plant right away, that is okay. You can keep your plant in this small pot for maybe a few days or maybe even a few weeks. Just make sure to water it because when I just got this plant a few weeks ago, the soil was completely dry so I watered it right away and also I have started introducing it to sunlight. But if you just got your plant today or maybe you're just getting a plant, you can repot it right away. To repot it, you need first a pot. I have this one right here. Preferably you want a tall pot. You also need carnivorous plant soil. In this case, I'm using a mixture of peat moss and perlite. There are many different types of carnivorous plant soil, but here the important thing is not to use standard potting soil. That soil has minerals, has fertilizers, which can end up killing your plant. So make sure to get carnivorous plant soil, uh, the pot, and also pure water. In this case, I'm using distilled water, but you also have the option to use reverse osmosis water or rainwater. Besides those, do not use anything else, not employ tap water or bottled water, because any of those water sources can end up killing your plant, which might already be weak. Now, the first thing you want to do is to get your plant out of this small pot and pot your Venus flytrap in this larger one. The soil of your pot should already be humid and in this case I've made a hole here with a sharpie so I can introduce the Venus flytrap. But now let me show you how to get your Venus flytrap out of this pot. What I like to do is I use a pencil or sometimes you can use your fingers and I kind of make some holes on the sides. Do not worry too much about the roots because the roots grow vertically. So you really have low odds to harm any root. And then press the pot on the sides to kind of loosen up the soil so it won't prevent the plant from coming out. And then I put my fingers in those holes and then kind of try to grab that soil and pull the soil with the plant and the pot in opposite directions. Sometimes the soil is kind of compacted and it might be a little hard, but in many cases it's not too bad. Like right now, it just came out. Then you can get rid of the soil. You do not have to, but for me it's much easier to just get rid of the soil and that way I can just pot my plant instead of keeping like a ball of soil there, which is not a not necessary. At this time, when it is bare root, like you can see, you can appreciate the long roots of the plant, which will go there inside the hole. And also you can appreciate the rhizome right there, which looks healthy. At this point, it is a great time to trim your plant. So if you have a pair of scissors, go ahead and chop off any type of black leaves. It's a lot easier to do it when the plant is bare root. Also at this point, always when I am repotting my Venus flytraps, is a great time to do some leaf pullings and attempt to propagate your Venus flytrap. I actually have a whole video about it if you're interested in propagating your plants. Once your plant is all trimmed and ready, then you can go ahead and introduce it in that hole in the soil. In this case, I'm going to try to make it a little, a little bigger, that way it'll be a lot easier to pot it. 
then you are going to introduce the roots and kind of try to push them in the hole as much as you can. These plants are pretty resilient, so do not be too afraid of harming it. You can handle it without being too worried. And then what I like doing is I just push the soil or the potting media that you have from the sides into the hole until you can anchor the plant in the ground. Make sure that it's very firm and that way your plant is, is all set. When you are doing all these, try to avoid triggering the traps. So do not touch the traps in the inside area. These wastes the, the plant's energy. But uh, to be honest, during repotting, it's very easy for you to trigger the plants, uh, to trigger the traps when you make a mistake. So do not overly worry, but if you can, just avoid touching them. Now that your plant is set in this new pot, the first thing you can do is to, to water it. So use that distilled water to water it from the top. I like to do that first. That way the soil starts compressing and then your plant sets in, in the soil a little bit more. You should continue to water your plant normally. So keep the soil moist, but never swamp it. Just, just moist at all times and to start introducing it to sunlight. Maybe you can give it a few hours of sunlight, maybe four or five the first day, and then add one hour every day until you get to the maximum. Maybe it's 12 hours, maybe it's 14 hours in your area. A lot of sunlight is always great for Venus flytraps. And uh, it is preferred that you employ sunlight if you do not have that option. Artificial lighting is an option, but sunlight is just so much better and a lot, a lot easier for the plant. After you have repotted your rescue, you have to be very careful to make sure that you don't make any mistakes that can accidentally end up killing your plant. So uh, I'll give you some tips for that. But before that, I just wanted to remind you, if you think this information has have been useful so far, I'll really appreciate if you can like this video, it really helps the channel. Now here are the tips. In the next few weeks, your plant might look down, it might look droopy and kind of sad. Uh, do not worry too much, just make sure that you're providing the sunlight and make sure that you're providing that water. Also, during those weeks, do not fertilize your plant, do not feed it manually, so do not put any bug inside the traps. If your plant maybe catches a bug, that is okay, but do not forcefully feed your plant. Also, do not play with the traps if you have any small children or any pets that might be playing or causing a stress to your plant, make sure that you maybe hide the plant or place it somewhere where it's safe and, and won't receive any type of stress. A tip that I like to use is that I actually always get my cell phone as soon as I get a new plant and I take a picture of it. And that way, a few months later, I can take another picture and then compare the before and after. And it really helps me assess if I'm actually providing good care for the plant and if it's developing right. New growth, great color in the plants and larger traps are usually great signs that your plant is recovering and it's starting to thrive. I hope this tutorial was helpful and it gave you some insight in how to rescue these plants that you find in big, big box stores. If you like learning about Venus flytraps and other carnivorous plants, it would be great if you can subscribe to the channel and join the community. This is what the channel is all about. And thank you so much for watching.